What's going on guys? Welcome back to my personal channel. Welcome back to another transfer daily video for you guys and people the wait is over. We have been waiting months and months for a goalkeeper to come and it looks like the day is finally upon us. Edward Mendy is completing his medical at Stamford Bridge as we speak. The announcement should be confirmed either maybe later today, probably tomorrow I'm thinking, but it will be done. I just hope the guy will be eligible in time for West Brom. We're going to talk about the Edouard Mendy news in this video today. We're also going to preview the Chelsea v Barnsley game. Also going to talk about what this Edward transfer, what this Edward Mendy transfer means in the long term in terms of our transfers in and out of the club. And we're also going to talk about a couple of outgoing transfers as well. So guys, stay tuned. Also, don't forget to like and subscribe if you haven't done so already. Big up everyone who's subscribed as well we've just hit 15k on the channel and that's just another milestone that we've got past so thanks to all you guys for the support and if you guys haven't done so already please just press those buttons it's only one or two buttons and it helps me out a little bit so i'm gonna push the propaganda anyway so please if you guys haven't done so already smash that like button press the subscribe button hit the bell notification and yeah let's go straight into the biggest news of the day edward mendy is completing his medical at stamford bridge frank lampard confirmed that in the pre-match press conference for the chelsea barnsley game and our goalkeeping worries look to be over i'm not going to sit here and try and overhype edward mendy too much because I, I do think we did the exact same thing with kepa and fool me once shame on you fool me twice shame on me you know what the saying goes edward mendy though he has the basics mapped out at least the guy is tall he is commanding he will come out of his box and actually catch corners he doesn't have limp wrists the guy can actually reach to his far corners so you know what he's got the basics sorted out and i think with kepa the standards have literally hit the floor i did initially say that I thought Edouard Mendy wasn't coming in to replace Kepa and that I thought Edouard Mendy was coming in to compete for his spot. And I do think overall, with the entire season, that might still be the case. But as of right now, nope, that is finished. With the way Kepa has had these first two games, that is absolutely finished. And we've been needing a goalkeeper for so long. I, I kind of feel bad for Kepa with the way the last year and a half has gone for him because he did start the season very promisingly. No, no, he didn't start the season very promisingly. He started his Chelsea career very promisingly. The 18-19 campaign had a lot of promise to it. had a lot of good moments in it. You remember him saving us in the Europa League semi-final in the game against Frankfurt, the Spurs semi-final as well, and he got the third highest clean sheets in the league, so there was a good goalkeeper there, but the 18, I mean the 19-20 season, it just all went to mud, I'm just going to go through a few of the stats, had the worst save percentage in Premier League history, not even in the league in history, conceded 8% of Chelsea's goals since 1992 in two years, and for 30% of the goals conceded last season, he didn't move for it. Also, adds the fact the guy didn't catch a corner the entire 1920 season and the corner that he caught against Liverpool was the first corner he'd caught in over a year. It's been a nightmare for Kepa over the last 18 months and I think for Edouard Mendy it's kind of made the job a little bit easy for him. Let's be real the standards are literally at the floor right now. Mendy literally just has to make a save and I think the fans will be all over him. He has to catch a corner, the fans will be all over him. We'll literally be like little kids just standing in amazement at Mendy just doing the most basic of things because the last year and a half has been that bad. And I don't blame Renz for trying to raise the transfer fee or trying to stall it a little bit. We know that's why this deal wasn't confirmed before Liverpool because as soon as the Brighton game came out and Kepa had that mistake for the Brighton equaliser, suddenly Renz wanted 28 million and Tamori on loan, which was jarring but understandable. But I think Marina's worked on magic again. I think it's going. I think Mendy is coming for about 22 to 24 million, and I don't think Tomori's going the other way as well, especially after that Liverpool game as well. Like, just keep him here, or at the worst, send him in somewhere in England, but keep him in the Premier League because the guy's still a baller. I never had my reservations about him anywhere. I just didn't. I thought Lampard did. He needs that experience, but bruv, put him next to Thiago Silva and he'll learn a lot from him. Lampard also said that Petacek was a huge reason in signing Mendy. And he said that, uh, what was it, Christoph Lollishon was a hu huge reason for it as well. He said, with it being such a specialist position and Czech having been the best goalkeeper in the world, his input as is important. And 
at least this at least this signing isn't as rushed as the Kepa deal was because we know the situation with that where Thibaut Courtois snaked us out with a week left before the season started and we were in a rush to find the goalkeeper and we just went and spent 70 million on one from Athletic Bilbao just randomly out of nowhere that was poor scouting I'm not blaming Kepa for that. I don't even know if I'll blame Lolishon for that because I don't think Lolishon wanted Kepa initially. But I think we're learning from our mistakes now. We've got a new goalkeeper coming in. Uh, what does this mean for our, the rest of our signings going forward? Now, I think all of our focus is going to turn on to Declan Rice. I don't know how feasible it is that he's going to join us with this much left of the chance window, especially with the season starting as well. You know how important he is to West Ham, especially with West Ham's incomings being so poor this season. But that also is a catch-22 because that's half the reason why they might be forced to sell Declan Rice because they need to bring in more reinforcements to try and play the way David Moyes wants them to. I know they're interested in Emerson and there's been light talks but nothing too concrete. If they want Emerson, I'd be deadly serious and say there's no way they get Emerson without Declan Rice coming the other way. Yeah, of course, we're going to end up having to give them 40 or 50 million as well. I don't care. We still need a natural DM. I think Kante's had an amazing first couple games, but I do think he'd be better with a natural DM next to him and him roaming a bit more further forward. Playing the free in midfield on Sunday, it wasn't bad. And like I said, for the first half, it was working excellently. But I think Jorginho was a weak point in that midfield, only just. I did say he had a good game. And I still stand by that. I thought his first half, he was very good in possession and trying to beat the Liverpool breast. But I feel like Declan Rice would have offered us just that little bit more athletically and defensively that Jorginho doesn't offer. So I hope we can try and pull Declan Rice in. I'm not too optimistic about it because I think especially with the way West Ham's business has been this season, that Brady D and Garner guy going, going for 12 million and all the West Ham fans and even players being in uproar over that. And you're going to sell your best asset to one of your biggest rivals straight after that. It's like you're just asking to get relegated. So I wouldn't be surprised if that deal doesn't happen. But I, I will be real, I hope it does because that would literally complete possibly the greatest transfer window in the Abramovich era. But we have to wait and see on that. It's still a lot of speculation on Declan Rice. You know Declan Rice wants to move. Chelsea want to bring him in. The only problem is the price tag. If we can try and lower that down a little bit, maybe. If not, we'll potentially have to wait a year, but it is what it is. Good news is, anyway, the goalkeeper is sorted. We don't have to worry anymore. We ain't got no more limp wrists in goal. We can't reach corners, can't catch crosses, can't reach the top corner, has no confidence in himself. We've got a new goalkeeper. It's a fresh start. And for him, it's the easiest fresh start possible because the standards couldn't be lower right now. So, Edward Mendy, welcome to Chelsea. I don't think you, it could get much worse. Right, before I end this video, I'm going to talk about the Chelsea Barnsley preview for a little bit. And yeah, games are non-stop, are coming thick and fast for us this season. I think three days after this game, we got West Brom away. Three days before, we had Liverpool at home. So there is going to be hella rotation in this game. It gives Frank Lampard an early opportunity to rotate. It gives the team a good chance to up their fitness as well because I know we haven't, we aren't fully back to full match fitness. Our preseason wasn't long enough. We only had one preseason match, and you could see that over the first two games as well. That is not an excuse for the Liverpool loss, by the way. I've said that many, many of times. I thought we had a brilliant performance before the red card. I'm not delving too deep into it, but we're not, we're not fully up to first gear. So this is a good chance to rotate players. For the players as well, this is a good chance for them to show what they can do and try and compete for a spot in one of the most competitive Chelsea sides in recent history. And we're facing a Barnsley side that knows how to be resilient. They survived in the championship in with minutes to spare, I think, against Brentford in the last game of the season. So they do need the same resiliency if they want to try and get a result tomorrow as well. Let's go into the team news. And for Chelsea, it's optimistic news again. Thiago Silva looks to be making his first debut for Chelsea. Same thing with Ben Chilwell as well, which was surprising for me because I thought his injury was going to be a lot longer than it looks to be now. But they both look to be making their debuts for Chelsea tomorrow. Not sure how much minutes they get. I doubt that they're going to get the full 90. But regardless of that, it's just good to see them back. And it's good to have Thiago Silva back anyway because even with how good our defensive organisation was over the last two games, Thiago Silva is just going to make it better. So I am very excited to see how Thiago Silva blends into English football if his age really isn't that much of a problem and 
the type of player that we've got in the back line anyway because I'm just so gassed to have a leader like this playing for us. So yeah, Thiago Silva looks to be getting his game time back. Same thing with Ben Chilwell as well. Hakim Ziyech and Pulisic are still not going to be playing. They're still coming back from their respective injuries as well. And Christensen is suspended after the Liverpool game. And we already know about that mistake. I've said it too many times. So we'll just go straight into the lineup. Um, in goal, I'm going to go for Willy Caballero. Maybe you dash Kepper in there for one more run. I mean, he can't have a worse game than he did against Liverpool. But no, I think Caballero still has to play the cup games. I think it's only fair to him. So Willy Caballero is going to start for me. Right back, I'm going to go for Aspel Equator because he hasn't really played much this season yet, has he? So it'd be a good rotation option for him anyway. Gives Reese James a bit of a break too. And next to him, I'm going to, I'm going to put Thiago Silva because I think if there's any problem with the English barrier, Aspel Equator's there, who's played at Marseille, understands French as well. So that will solve it. And next to him, I'm going to put Fikayo Tomori because only played 45 minutes against Liverpool and it was an amazing 45 minutes. So why not build on that? Christensen's probably going to be back for the, what's it called, the West Brom game. And that's going to push Tomori maybe down to fourth choice again. So play him in this game now and let him see what he can do. And let's see if he can build himself up and hopefully climb up the ranking order again. Uh, left back, I'm going to go for Emerson because Alonso's going to need a break. Uh, maybe play Ian Matson. I don't know, but one or the other for me. Emerson at left back. In midfield, I'm going to go for Jorginho as well because I just don't think he's going to be the midfielder that starts on Saturday. So you might as well play him on the Wednesday instead. And next to him is going to be Barkley and Loftus-Cheek. And they're both two players that really need to stamp their authority on the side. Uh, Loftus-Cheek, especially after that Brighton game, he's going to be looking to try and have a much more eventful performance for him. So I think it'd be great for both of them to start. On the left, I'm going to go for hudson Doy just because, seriously, at this point, if he doesn't start this game, he's just going to hand in a transfer request and leave. So, yeah, hudson Doy starts on the left as well. On the right, I'm going to go for Mason Mount because, again, I don't think he'll start on Saturday. So, I think it'd be better for him and better for his confidence as well. Play on that right-hand side against a weaker side and try and see if you can get your mojo back a little bit more. And up front, I'm going to go for Tammy Abraham as well. So pick between Tammy Abraham and Olivier Giroud. But I think Lampard's going to go with you for this one. So you'll be Tammy Abraham for me. It'll be interesting to see how the, t how the players play. Especially with a lot of players who've gone down the pecking order just a little bit of all the new arrivals. I want to see how they impact on those performances. Uh, let me know your score predictions down in the comment section below. Don't forget to let me know how gassed you guys are about the Edward Mendy signing as well. Don't forget to like and subscribe to Carefree Lewis G. Take care and I'll see you soon. Up the channel.